If you'd like to know a little bit about rich and lean fueling on a two-stroke and how lean fueling can damage the components, then keep watching this video because over the next few minutes I'm going to explain. And knowledge is indeed power. So let's begin. And first of all, we normally hear people referring to carburetor settings as being either too lean or too rich. They come sort of as opposite poles. So to best explain this, let's imagine we've got a chainsaw and we'll take a look at its engine. We can see we've got the fuel tank there, the fuel pipes, the carburetor, and of course the engine. So let's imagine a good scenario here. We've got an optimal amount of fuel coming out of the carburetor and into the engine, and that's mixed with a good constitution of premium quality oil. As we know, all of those moving components will be well lubricated and this engine will fare well over time. And so in a nutshell, all that's meant by the fueling being too rich is that there's too much fuel coming out of the carburetor into the engine than what the engine actually needs. And at the same time, there'll be more smoke produced because of it. So if too much fuel in here is what it means to be too rich, then obviously too little fuel is what it means to be too lean. So in this situation, even though we've got a good quality fuel and a good quality premium oil, if there's too little fuel coming in, then there's going to be too little oil. What I'm talking about here is if there's just slightly too little fuel coming through, allowing the engine revs to raise, because that's what happens when engines are running a little too lean. It actually causes over revving of the engine. It's a slight offset of that happy medium midway point. So I'm not actually talking about going too far with this and actually causing fuel starvation because of course that wouldn't allow the engine to run. We kind of need a happy medium midway point between rich and lean. And so too lean means overworking of the components and less lubrication there from the oil to support the overworking of those components. And so that is going to result in engine damage. And the kind of damage is the same. It's the scoring of the piston and the barrel. It's the seizing of the big end bearings and the main bearings. And so now we understand understand that, let's move on and look at some of the common causes for this type of lean fueling. Well, one common cause can be the fuel filter. I'm not talking about the fuel filter being totally blocked because again, that would stop the engine from running. But when it's partially blocked, it only allows a partial amount of fuel, of course, down through the fuel lines, through the carburetor and out into the engine. So if the fuel filter has been isolated as being the problem, the simple thing is to replace it. So moving on now to a much more common cause of lean running, and that is incorrectly set mixture screws, the tuning screws on the carburetor. So the main jet here supplies the bulk of the fuel for the engine and these areas here provide a smaller but more precisely measured amount of fuel. And this measured amount of fuel can be adjusted by the operator by turning each of these screws. If we turn them anti-clockwise they screw out and allow more fuel up and if we turn them clockwise they screw in and allow less fuel up. If we were to unscrew these screws too far anti-clockwise then we'd create a situation of being too rich inside the engine. And in the opposite way, if we were to screw them in too far, then it would create a situation of being too lean. Again, I'm not talking about screwing these screws either out or in way too far, where it either produces too much fuel and the engine stops or too little fuel that the engine stops. I'm talking about going just under or above that happy medium of fuel supply here. And so when these adjustment screws are incorrectly set to too lean, allowing too little fuel into the engine, and of course with it too little oil, then we're gonna see this kind of damage over time. If you do need to adjust these screws and tune your carburetor optimally, I do have a video here on YouTube showing you how to do that and I'll leave a link so you can check that out. Okay, so now we'll move on and look at another quite common cause. What can sometimes happen is we get holes occurring here in the inlet boot or the inlet manifold as some might call it. Generally, these inlet boots are made of a type of rubbery material and they can become damaged over time, allowing leakage. And because the engine's creating a suction inside of there, it draws in air from these little damaged holes and that air now mixes with the air and fuel it reduced the vacuum inside the inlet here that was produced by the engine and of course that meant then there was less vacuum to draw out the right amount of fuel out of the main jet and that created a situation where there was less fuel and more air going into the engine and now we could say this is lean fueling and situations very much the same as this can occur by the carburetor being too loose and in that case there we're going to get leakage in the, any of the joints between the carburetor and the boot and the boot and the engine.
engine. And this again is going to create over revving of the engine and then there'll be too little lubrication in there and that means we're going to get damage in the barrel and piston in the big end bearings and the main bearings again. And so in that case we might just need to tighten up the carburetor and all may be well. But generally if there is any damage on that boot we need to replace the boot because it can't be repaired in my opinion. It'll always leak if there is a hole there. We'll move on now to another cause of lean fueling and it's actually to do with the barrel. Not the actual barrel itself, it's the gasket at the bottom. Because at this point the barrel can separate from the rest of the engine as most of us know. And so of course the cylinder is bolted onto the crankcase then. But it's vital that there remains an airtight seal there between the two. Because of the pressures generated inside the crankcase here, even if there's a very slight gap there between the barrel and the crankcase, there's going to be air being drawn in there. And so as the engine runs now and air continues to enter into the crankcase, mixing with that air and fuel mixture that was correct for normal engine running, we've now got a state of lean fueling. So leakage like this at this point could be just a case of the fact that the barrel bolts are loose and they just need tightening up to the correct settings. Otherwise it could be that a new barrel gasket's required. In the past I've roughly pinpointed this problem by taking a look at this area here between the crankcase and the barrel and if there's a lot of oil around that area it can sometimes mean that there's a leakage there of the barrel gasket. And just to clarify that's because as the piston raises there is a vacuum in there drawing in this air that we don't want but as the piston lowers there's a positive pressure so it would sort of blow out of that area and that of course is when it would blow out the fuel inside there and of course the fuel is mixed with oil. The fuel would evaporate but the oil would still linger around the bottom of the barrel. But having oil here doesn't always mean this problem but if there is it might be worth conducting a leakage test. We can also get the same sort of lean fueling issue here drawing in air if the crankcase has trauma to it and there's a hole there in the crankcase you need to talk to a professional to see if the cost of repairing this outweighs the cost of buying a new machine. But a more common reason in this area is the main seals leaking. I've had to replace many of these in the past due to this particular reason. I personally always insist on replacing the accompanying crankshaft bearings as well. And that's because anywhere in the crank bearings whatsoever will make it so the new seals don't seal either. So in my opinion it's always best to do the job right first time so we don't have to go back and do it a second time. And so with that of course just covering the basics I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you've gained something from it and please take a look down in the description below where you'll find a link to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of certain two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. And I shall be continually adding new downloads here so please keep your eye on this side of the site so you can always be up to date with what's new on there and to continually see if there's any downloads of particular value to you. The best of it is that they're printable so you can take them in the workshop with you and study them at your own time whilst you're working on your machine. There are some paid downloads but most of them are and will remain free. And in the meantime, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.